Hey everybody, it's Molly with All Ears and I am here at the Magic Kingdom with a brand new video. Except we're not staying at the Magic Kingdom very long because today's video is the vice you never thought you'd hear from me. What's the best way to have a great day at the Magic Kingdom? To leave. Today I'm going to be sharing one of my tried and true tricks to have a fabulous day here at the Magic Kingdom. I hope you're ready. I hope you're excited. Let's get to it. Point of view. You watched my best day ever in the Magic Kingdom video and you got here at Rope Drop. You've ridden a bunch of rides. You've seen characters in the cavalcades, including new characters making appearances like Moana and Mulan. Hi Angus, I love you so much. You're a good boy. Ah, it's Mulan! Ah! So you just had to come back and see me again. Couldn't help myself. Oh my gosh, Moana! But now, it's afternoon. They're tired. They're hot, they're cranky, and I'm not talking about just the kids, I'm talking about the adults. So what's the best thing you can do to have a great day at the Magic Kingdom? It's to leave for a little bit. If you're staying at a Disney resort, a lot of people opt to go back to their resort for a swim and a nap and something to eat in the afternoon, and then they come back refreshed. But if you're not staying at a Disney resort or you're staying at one that's far away like Animal Kingdom Lodge or the All Stars and you don't wanna go all the way back to your resort, well, that's when the monorail resorts come in handy. There are some great dining options at the monorail resorts, which is what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna show you two of my favorites, talk about some other ones. We're gonna have a little relaxing break outside the chaos of the Magic Kingdom, and then come back, because I promise it's gonna make a world of difference in your day. So let's get to our first reservation. So for our lunch today, we are actually headed to the Grand Floridian. I have a reservation there at the Grand Floridian Cafe a very delicious and very underrated spot and while you could take the monorail we're actually going to take the new walkway because it's a really nice 10 or so minute walk and it's faster um, than the monorail because the grand floridian is actually the last stop on the monorail loop so you'd have to stop at the contemporary transportation ticket center usually the polynesian but that's not running right now and then the grand floridian so it would take about 30 minutes to get there on the monorail from here. Another great option if you don't want to walk or take the monorail, you could take the boat over to the Grand Floridian. So lots and lots of ways to get there. It's really, really nice to be able to walk to the Grand Floridian from the Magic Kingdom. And because it's connected there's another walkway between the Polynesian and the Grand, so you could actually technically now walk to the Polynesian as well. It would take about probably 20 or so minutes to get there, but on a not super hot day, which is not today, um, it would be a really nice stroll if you didn't want to take the monorail to the Polynesian either. As we're strolling to the Grand Floridian, let's talk about the monorail resorts, what you can eat there, which ones you can visit. So the monorail resorts are titled as such because they're on the monorail, which makes them some of the most expensive and desirable properties to stay at at Walt Disney World because you're so close to the Magic Kingdom. Um, you can now technically walk from any of them. The fastest walk is from the Contemporary, then the Grand, and then the Polynesian, but you've also got that monorail and boats from the Polynesian and the uh, Grand as well. So super, super great if you are staying at one of those resorts. You're very, very close to the Magic Kingdom, which is why they're expensive. but you don't have to stay at them to eat at them. Anyone can visit a Disney resort. Um, right now, the official policy is that you do have to have a dining reservation. So I do have one over at the Grand Floridian Cafe, which is why I'm able to go pop in over there. And um, the Grand Floridian Cafe is a table service restaurant. Very, very underrated in my opinion. They do brunch till two and then they do dinner at five. Also at the Grand Floridian, not open right now but you have two signature restaurants, Narcoosie's and Citrico's. Those are a little swankier, a little fancier. Definitely a plus about staying at the Grand Floridian is this new walkway. Um, you are the first stop on the monorail from the Grand Floridian to the Magic Kingdom, but on your way back, you're the last stop. So it will take much longer to ride it back than just walk back. Granted, I know 
after a full day at the Magic Kingdom, you may not want to walk, but in the morning, if you were staying at the Grand, oh, to go get a cup of coffee from Gasparilla Island Grill, stroll on this lovely walkway over to the Magic Kingdom, doesn't that sound nice? Sounds lovely. Over yonder, you've got the Contemporary, which is also walkable from Magic Kingdom. A little bit shorter walk than the Grand Floridian. Got some good food options there as well. A fabulous thing you could do is if you're booking your dining early enough in advance or you get lucky, if you could get a Chef Mickey's around 11, get to the park before opening, rope drop, do as many attractions as you can before 11, and then take your break over at Chef Mickey's where Mickey and the gang are there for a character breakfast. Wow, that would be a great day. That would be a perfect Magic Kingdom day, in my opinion. I went to Chef Mickey's when it reopened. The characters are doing distanced greets. It's not a buffet anymore, but the food has actually improved quite a bit. So I say, if you've got little ones especially, that would be a great way to take a break from the Magic Kingdom is have a nice late brunch, if you will, with some characters in the air conditioning sitting down. Other great options at the Contemporary, the Wave of American Flavors, table service restaurant, casual. Um, they do a great breakfast as well. Um, and then they're open for dinner, so you could go over there. Um, you've also got California Grill over at the Contemporary. That's again a signature restaurant. It's the top of the resort restaurant. Very, very uh, popular restaurant because of the view of Magic Kingdom, especially when fireworks are running, so not right now. Um, again, I don't personally think I'd want to walk from the Magic Kingdom over to California Grill because um, I'm probably not dressed right for starters and I'm probably sweaty for others reasons um, but the signature restaurants uh, they do expect you to little, look a little nicer no swimsuits no cutoffs you know a little fancier we're almost there it's been just about 10 minutes so it's a really nice short walk um, but one thing I want to highlight before we get there is if you don't have a table service reservation if you aren't really sure if you're going to want to leave Magic Kingdom if you're going to get everything done and then it's you know the mid-afternoon and you're like boy I really wish I could go sit somewhere have a drink and have something to eat not in the theme park check that walk-up wait list I did it during the perfect day in Magic Kingdom video where a lot of these Magic Kingdom tips are coming from. We'll link that for you. Um, and I was able to get into Skipper Canteen inside Magic Kingdom. And I checked it before I left the park. And you could actually get it for Grand Floridian Cafe, the Wave of American Flavors over at the Contemporary, and Kona Cafe at the Polynesian. So these restaurants are all underrated in my opinion. Um, but they're not super, super popular because there's no characters. Resort restaurants tend to be less popular than theme park restaurants in general. Um, and while they're good, and I really enjoy them and think they're great. Um, for some people, that's just not something that they're gonna book. So um, you can usually get last remnant reservations to any of those three or try that walk up wait list um, where it might say, hey, we can see you in an hour or so and then you'd be good to go. But hey, look at that, we're here at the Grand. Isn't this just the moment oh, of calm that you need in a Magic Kingdom day? There's where we started. All right, the Grand Floridian, if you've never been, is known as Disney's fanciest resort, swankiest resort, um, most expensive resort, but it's absolutely stunning. It's got this Victorian era Southern hospitality charm and decor, and it really does feel grand when you're here. Look how gorgeous this is. Just the lawn is perfect. Everything is perfect. And we are right now almost to check in at the G Flow Cafe, as I like to call it, because I'm very hip and very cool. Grand Floridian Cafe. They all checked in, just waiting for my text to let me know my table's ready. So they have seating inside the restaurant right here. They're also doing overflow seating in 1900 Park Fair, which is a character meal that's not open right now. However, when that one does reopen, that's another great choice. It's kind of an underrated character meal. Um, in the mornings, it was, prior to the closure, kind of British friends. So it was Winnie the Pooh, Tigger, Alice the Mad Hatter, and um, Mary Poppins. And then at dinner, it was Cinderella's family. So Cinderella, Prince Charming, um, Lady Tr 
Tremaine and the stepsisters. So it was a really cool character meal, character buffet um, with some rare characters. But since that's not open right now, they are using it as extra seating for the Grand Floridian Cafe. They also have some tables outdoors. If you prefer eating outdoors when you do that mobile check-in, um, you can put a preference. They can't always accommodate that, um, but there are some outdoor tables as well. Let's take a look at the menu. So here's the teaser menu. Oh, how exciting. An heirloom apple salad, yum. Avocado toast, steak and eggs, lobster thermidor, burger, waffles, pancakes. And then here's your dinner menu. A salad, ooh, fried chicken, salmon steak, some yummy looking desserts. So again, they do lunch, they call it. Why not brunch? I'll never know. Um, and then dinner. Don't get confused when you see breakfast, lunch, and dinner on the menus or on the app. These two are the same because they're blunt. Get it? Another thing I want to point out for safety, of course, you have to have your face covering, um, but they are going to do a temperature screening before you go to any sit down restaurant at any of the resorts. Um, so just keep that in mind. They're going to temp check you. Don't be alarmed. Okay, I got my text that my table's ready. I got my temperature checked, and now I'm headed in to have some lunch. This is actually one of the cool little things a lot of people don't know about coming into the Grand Floridian Cafe. The bakery team that also does the incredible gingerbread house here, that life-size gingerbread house, makes little sculptures and they're around the resort and there's usually one in this restaurant. And the one right now is pretty new. They said it's entirely made of chocolate. Isn't that bonkers? And it's our pal Remy. And he's got his Gusteau's wine bottle. And there's our little friend up there. And then if you come around to the back, his brother Emil is eating cheese. And I, I feel like I'm looking in a mirror. Um, so I'm gonna reflect on that a little bit. Do you see the resemblance? That's me. For my lunch, I decided to go with something a little lighter, a little healthier. I went with this heirloom apple salad. Um, so it's got your apples, your greens, um, a little bit of cheddar, some candied nuts and prosciutto chips. Um, and then I was told that their secret menu chicken and waffles was available. So whoopsie daisy. This is called Balance, um, friends. It's great, you're on vacation. Um, but they used to have the chicken and waffles on the menu and then it hasn't been on the menu since they reopened, but the waffles on the menu, but she let me know you can order the chicken and waffles with their fried chicken. It's coated in cornflakes, two big pieces of chicken, a giant Mickey waffle, honey sriracha. She brought me extra honey sriracha because Loretta is an angel. Um, but so you can ask for this, not on the menu, also not on the menu, but you can ask for lobster eggs, Benny. Yum. Isn't this incredible? I've heard legends of this fried chicken and waffles and I've never had it myself. I cannot wait. Look at that. Look at that. I'm very excited to try this chicken and waffles. I've, it's been on my Disney eating list, my Disney bucket list for a long time. OMG, you are worth the wait, my friend. That is some of the best chicken I've ever had. It is so crunchy, because the cornflakes, it's cooked perfectly. Giant Mickey waffle, what could be better than that? You're definitely gonna wanna get the extra honey sriracha. Um, it's not too hot or anything, it just has a nice flavor. They brought me syrup as well, if you're more of a syrup kind of person, but I wanna take a bath in this honey sriracha, if I'm being honest. It's a perfect mix of sweet with a little bit of heat. This is so good. Whoa. The chicken is perfectly cooked. At dinner, you can just get their fried chicken um, if you'd rather have that. But there's a slight sweetness to it. And then it, it tastes like a regular Mickey waffle, but it's big. But it's like perfectly sweet, giant Mickey waffle. What could be better than this, honestly? Salad, maybe. We'll see. Should have probably started with salad. Mmm, and it is phenomenal. Lightly tossed greens, not overdressed. Wow. 
Why am I allowed out? That's a fabulous salad. Definitely not enough for an entree, but I think you could get this and split a bigger entree or get this in another starter. Really, really fresh. Love the crispiness from the nuts and the prosciutto. Like the crispiness from the apples as well. That is a tasty salad. Mm. Perfect, perfect, perfect. What a great meal. What a great break. We're having fun. We're enjoying the air conditioning. We're out of the chaos. This is quick. I just talked to Loretta, who's fabulous. And let me know this is a house-made sherry vinaigrette on the salad. And that if you are looking to eat something a little lighter, healthier, they can add grilled shrimp or grilled chicken on there. Um, so if you don't want to eat a giant thing of waffles and chicken, you could just eat this salad. But I am enjoying both. Just wrapped up my fabulous lunch at Grand Floridian Cafe. I am full of happiness and waffles. Um, don't forget one of my pro dining tips. Always ask for a to-go drink. Um, as long as it's not a specialty beverage or an alcoholic beverage or something, they'll grab one for you. So I got an iced tea to go um, so I can enjoy that as I walk back to Magic Kingdom. Um, but wasn't that nice, like just a little hour in the air conditioning, away from the chaos, really, really good meal. Magic Kingdom's not my favorite park for food and sit down meals in general. So I love the Grand Floridian Cafe, an A plus choice. Now I'm refreshed and recharged, I'm ready to get back to the magic. A nice little jaunt back and we are back at the Magic Kingdom. So I think Grand Floridian Cafe is probably my top choice of anywhere to escape to because it doesn't take too long since you can walk both ways or ride the monorail, but the walking is very nice. And now you're back in the park and ready to party. We've been back in the Magic Kingdom for just a few minutes. So much has already happened. We saw the cavalcade with Moana again. They added Moana to the Fantasyland Friends one, and now it's called the Magic Kingdom Cavalcade. And they added Mulan to the princess one. She's one of my favorite princesses tied with Belle, so I was really jazzed about that. So now when you see this cavalcade, you may see those new characters, which is really exciting. And I bought a Wishable, because new Wishables came out. I'm not a huge Wishables collector, but these new Guardians of the Galaxy Wishables just came out. And there's the possibility of getting either a Baby Groot or a Drax. And I'd like to take my chances. If you're not familiar, Wishables are these collectible things that Disney marketing dreamt up to get people like me or people with small children to get them all because you don't know which one you're gonna get. So you're gonna feel the bag a bunch of times and try and guess and hope you get the one you want. It's a genius marketing scheme. I gotta give them more credit where credit's due. But anyway, let's see who we got. Okay, moment of truth. No littering. But look! Groot! This is very exciting. He is very adorable. He is Groot. All right, so now if you were a guest who just enjoyed a nice meal at the Grand Floridian, you would have hours upon hours to play in the Magic Kingdom. For us though, we only have a little bit of time because we're gonna go to another meal so I can show you another one of my favorite restaurants that you can do this little escape plan trick. So uh, let's roll that montage of our afternoon in the Magic Kingdom. time at Magic Kingdom. We saw Mulan again, we saw the band play Let It Go, which was great. We got a wishable, we stared longingly at the people mover, and now it's time to head out to our second reservation of the day. Again, I do not recommend this. I do not recommend doing two reservations outside of the park. I don't ever recommend doing two sit-down reservations in one day ever, just because they take up a lot of time, you get a lot of food, but for research. I will eat two meals. We are headed out of the Magic Kingdom and over to the Polynesian. So we're going to take the monorail, even though you could also take the boat to the Polynesian, but I enjoy a monorail. Um, keep in mind right now in this moment, the monorail is not actually stopping at the Polynesian. It's stopping right next door at the Transportation and Ticket Center. And then you can walk over. Actually, 
we take the boat? I'm kind of talking myself out of riding the monorail. I think we should take the boat. Let's go to the boat. I always go to the monorail, it's my default. But now that it, I'd have to walk from the TTC, which is not a long walk, it's like a five minute walk. I just kind of want to take a boat. And look, what good timing, there's a boat here right now. So as you can see, some places are not available. Like you can't sit on the ends anywhere and then some roads are completely blocked off. But let's get ourselves a seat, get ready to set sail across Seven Seas Lagoon. So the boat does stop at the Grand Floridian, which is great to know if you wanted to take the boat over from the Magic Kingdom instead of walking to the Grand. Um, but it will then move on to the Polynesian, which means when you're leaving, it goes the other way. It goes Grand, Polynesian, Magic Kingdom, that's the route. All right, we have made it to the Polynesian. Took about 15 minutes on the boat in total, including the stop at the Grand Floridian. Not too long at all. That's probably about how long it would take on the monorail. Um, so the boat, what a relaxing way to get to the Polynesian, which is scientifically proven to be the most relaxing resort. The Polynesian is under refurbishment right now. They're actually redoing it to have touches of Moana. The rooms are gonna have some Moana touches. We've seen the concept art um, and one sample room. So that's pretty cool. It looks nice. I was a little worried that it would get too like cartoony, but it's subtle touches of Moana. All right. Hello, sir. Just wanted to head up and grab something to eat if you don't mind. Great. All right, so at the Polynesian, we're gonna eat at Kona Cafe. This is again, a table service restaurant, one credit if you're on the dining plan. So very casual table service restaurant. Um, Ohana, the most popular restaurant here, is still not reopened. So TBD on that when that will happen just ordered so the menu has sushi they do a lot of bowls very asian influenced or polynesian influenced so you're gonna have like fruit in different things um they're definitely known for their sushi though they used to have it's not open right now but kona island which is just a sushi bar where you could walk up and get sushi so that's a big thing my husband is obsessed with sushi so we used to come here after magic kingdom and just sit at the sushi bar a lot um they've got wings which is actually what i've got um, gotten today. They're not the same as Ohana, but similar, um, but some sticky wings. And then they also have some great salads. They have a Kona coffee rubbed short rib, um, some sandwiches, burgers. So it looks all really yummy and I can't wait. And guys, there's a secret dessert here that I'm so excited to eat. I might cry. All right. So my meal is starting with some bread and butter, and this is just the standard butter and their yummy bread, but they used to have macadamia nut butter. I asked, asking you shall receive. Okay, she did say this was a secret and that they don't always have it, but you can always ask and get, see if they have it, but don't tell them I told you. And then I also got this beer because it's a pog juice beer. Uh, you may know that the signature juice that they serve at Ohana and around the Polynesian and some other Disney resorts, they always call it different things. It's Jungle Juice at the Tusker House, it's Florida Sunshine at Topolino's, but it's passion fruit, orange guava juice. And this is a beer brewed with that. Um, and this brewery is actually in Athens, Georgia. So that's pretty neat. And then for my meal, I got their sticky wings. Again, this is not the exact same glaze as Ohana, but it's similar in profile. And if I'm remembering correctly, it's a little bit sweet, honey, but look how yummy those look. And these are an appetizer, so definitely shareable. I'm literally giddy about this butter. Mm. It's literally got macadamia nut chunks in it. And I love macadamia nuts. Mm. Nice soft roll. A little warm, a little crunk. Amazing, again. Seems like it's a secret. I didn't even know they had it. I just said, oh, I remember when you had this? And she's like, always ask to be polite, but if they don't have it, I'm sorry. And then let's wash it down with a little sip of this. 
Ooh. Okay, it's definitely an IPA. It's definitely hoppy. You can taste that, but you can pick up on that fruit. I would say I'm not really getting distinct notes of any one specific passion fruit, orange or guava. It's more just a citrus taste along with the IPA. So it makes it very drinkable. It's a hot day, a nice cold beer. Sometimes that's the best thing when you're over 21. This is also where you can get that Lapu Lapu though, which is that iconic drink here at the Polynesian, which is inside a full pineapple. It's a rum drink. They normally serve it over at Ohana in the Tambu Lounge, but you can also get it here right now. Um, so you can get that. They've got the Back Scratcher, which is um, another opening day cocktail here. They've got really good cocktails at the Polynesian that are very vacation -y, so very like juice-based and tropical and rum. And if you're into that flavor profile, you'll definitely find something you like on the menu. And now wings, which are a really graceful and delicate food to eat. So. Here we go. Mm. Mm. OMG. Those are so saucy. Got a nice Christmas to the skin though. Definitely a sweet sauce. So if you're expecting like a buffalo or a hot wing, you're not gonna get that here. It's definitely a sweet sauce. Um, reminds me a lot of Ohana or like a teriyaki glaze. Definitely sweet, got some honey in it you can taste. It's got some sesame in it. Really, really good, really yummy. Um, and while they're not Ohana wings again, it makes me feel like I'm eating Ohana wings, which I know I'm not, but they're really good. And I just really like chicken wings, if I'm being honest. So they sounded amazing and they are. First part of the dessert course is here. It's this special pressed pot they do. It's a special blend of Hawaiian coffee. And she's like, you know that serves too. And I'm like, excellent. So I've got my coffee here. Do you see what I see? Is it bread pudding at the Polynesian? Yeah, that's what this is. It's a secret menu dessert here at Kona. And it is that pineapple bread pudding with the caramel sauce. It's slightly different than the one they did at Ohana, but they serve it up just the same. You've got the vanilla ice cream on it, yummy bread pudding, and then you've got your sauce. And oh my gosh, I haven't had Polynesian bread pudding, which is one of my top, I don't know, two favorite desserts in Disney World in a long time. And I'm so happy right now. Are you ready? Are you ready? Here we go. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Look at that. The main difference I can taste is that there's not bananas in the sauce. Which honestly, like, fine by me. I don't love bananas. That caramel sauce is so good. It's really caramelly. And then you've got the perfect bread pudding, the cool vanilla ice cream. The bread pudding does have pineapple in it. I haven't gotten a chunk yet, though. I'm so happy. Oh, there, I got some pineapple. Definitely comes through, brightens up the density. Ooey gooey caramel. This is a good thing. This is a good thing in my life right now. Let us also have a cup of coffee. I'm gonna start with a black. I normally drink coffee black, but I feel like this may be a little more intense than I'm used to. Um, and by that, I mean like at my house, I drink a black usually. Or I like that shaken Jamaican black. Sometimes you gotta treat yourself with a little pumpkin in there. Um, here we go. It also warms the cup, which is like a nice touch. Ooh, yeah, that is definitely good beans. And I'm not a bean snob at all, but that is definitely some high quality coffee. You can taste it. I'm gonna put a little splish splash of milk in there because it is a little darker than a roast I would normally do. Um, but wow, is that high quality coffee and that press pot comes. Um, it serves two, it's about $9, which, you know, you're gonna get a, several cups of coffee out of it. So I don't think that's a bad deal for, for some really good quality coffee. And now we're just living our best life with our press pot coffee, our bread pudding. I don't, I'm happy right now. 
and I think this is a great place to come if you want to escape the hustle and bustle of Magic Kingdom for a little bit. Get yourself some bread pudding, get yourself some chicken wings and coffee, recharge, and then head back over there. So Kona Cafe is open breakfast, lunch, and dinner. This is where you can get that iconic Tonga toast for breakfast, uh, which is that stuffed French toast that they've been batter and fry. Um, there is like a gap between lunch and dinner. So what I would recommend, um, because I believe the bread pudding you can only get at dinner, what I would recommend is doing like the earliest dinner possible, because then you can eat this, um, which is five o'clock. Um, because as the Magic Kingdom right now, it's open till nine o'clock. So you could be here from like five to 6.30 and then head back and still have some great time at the Magic Kingdom. I don't know. I don't know. Polynesian, why is your bread pudding so good? I don't know. But it is, and you should eat it. But again, it's on the secret menu, so you're welcome. Finished up my dinner at Kona Cafe. And honestly, I thought Grand Floridian Cafe had it in the bag. But then I had bread pudding and fancy coffee. So now it's kind of a toss up. In general though, I think I would recommend Grand Floridian Cafe solely because it's easier to get to the Grand Floridian than the Polynesian. The boat was lovely. You can again, take the monorail to the transportation ticket center right now. Um, but I like the ability to walk and I like Grand Floridian Cafe more than I like the Wave, which is the walkable, easy to access restaurant at the Contemporary Resort. So, um, but truly you're not gonna go wrong anywhere because you're gonna get a lovely sit down meal, relax for an hour, not that I don't love Magic Kingdom. Who doesn't love Magic Kingdom? But it's hectic, it's loud, it's crowded, it's hot. And your family's gonna thank you if you let them have an hour or so to recharge because there's very few people that can go open to close without taking any kind of break. So these are just breaks that are really easy to take, maybe somewhere you've never been before, and it'll let you last longer and have more fun at the Magic Kingdom. <laughs> Well, friends, that is a wrap on a video that features advice you probably never thought you'd hear me say. But I promise, if you take a little break from your Magic Kingdom day, it's gonna make for a more enjoyable and less cranky family. Let me know what you do. Do you rope drop to close Magic Kingdom? Do you show up late? Do you leave early? Do you leave in the middle of the day to take a break? Let us know in the comments. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media at AllEarsNet. And until next time, I'm Molly, and it's been magical. Wanna see more of my videos? Click over here. Want to subscribe? You can do that right here. And also, ring that notification bell to make sure you get instantly notified anytime we post a new video. Thanks for following. See you real soon.